In today's video, we're going to go back to a video I did a few weeks ago on how to finish off a quilt doing the binding an easy way. Now it's been super popular. I've had over 100,000 views. Thank you so much. But I have been getting a few questions. So in today's video, we're going to be addressing them. Now in this video, I showed you how to make the binding, attach the binding, attach the binding onto the front and actually sew it on the front so you'll see the stitches on the binding. But people were wondering, what did it look like on the back? So now let's take a look at the back. So here's where our binding meets and we joined it here. Remember we didn't do it the traditional way where we cut it on the diagonal and work out exactly the correct length and sew it. We tucked it in and you can have a look on the back here. Now I still plan to just hand tack that down so that it won't come undone at all. Whatever you choose to do you could do that or, you, or I could have sewn it before I did stitch it down on both sides. So let's quickly turn it over and have a look at this back. So here we have the back. Now what everyone was worried about was how these stitches would look. And if I flip it back over you can see those are the stitches holding down the binding from the front. And I don't think that looks bad at all. What to me it looks like is another row of these stitches which are actually my quilting stitches. I decided to do the echoing technique on either side of my seam. So we've got two running parallel. You can see them there. But anyway I think this stitch just actually looks like part of the quilt. Now if you didn't like that, something that you could have really easily done was change your thread on your bobbin to match the back of your quilt. So for this fabric I would have probably tried to choose some of this warm light brown colour here. That would have worked perfect. That would have just camouflaged in there and we wouldn't see it at all. So that is something you can do if you don't like that look. But to me it actually just looks like part of the design and I'm not fussed with that at all. Now while we are talking about thread, thread is something I'm sorry to say I'm a bit lazy with and I tend to find white always works. So when I was doing this quilt again I felt like white worked. I liked that it kind of stood out a little bit and we do have white in the fabric here. So I thought that white worked perfectly. Then on the front when I was attaching the binding again I had white in the binding so again I felt like white worked. However I could have used pink or I could have used this mustard color. If I really didn't want to see the stitches I think the mustard color would have been perfect and I'm sorry I don't have any threads to hold up against the quilt to show you because I'm in between homes at the moment but that mustardy brown color would have been great. I could have used mustardy brown for my top thread and then on the back I could have used this warm brown for the back and then we wouldn't have seen it all that much on the back here or on the front. So there we have it. I hope that has answered any of your questions about the back and about the thread and the colors that I've used and potentially what would have worked better. So I hope you enjoyed seeing the back of the quilt. I've had so many questions about that. If you'd like to see the video again, I'll put the link up here. Or if you'd like to see how I actually made that quilt top, which is called my I Spy Quilt, and I made it doing the chain piecing method, I'll put the link up here so you can see that too. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.